My name is Lukas, Lukas Pühringer. I'm a research engineer at New York University's Secure Systems Lab, where I maintain um, software supply chain security projects. Um, one of them is TUF. I'm a core member of the TUF team, or a member of the core TUF team. I maintain the specification and, above all, the Python reference implementation and related projects. And I um, would have liked, or I had planned to co-present with my friend Cairo from Testify Sec today, uh, but unfor unfortunately he couldn't make it to Prague. So I'll try my best to cover for him. Um, today I bring good news. Um, Tough finally joins Warehouse. Um, now you might ask what the heck is Tough and why is this good news? Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute, um, but I thought uh, we first do a little round of warm up um, because it's been an intense week and you might be tired. So who of you has used this command for some value of foo? Yeah, <laughs> bit of stretching. <laughs> Not surprising for a Python conference. What about this command? Um, excellent, very nice. And since we just heard it in the previous talk, uh, does anyone have a GitHub action that has already configured this? Okay, perfect audience. Great. So, as you maybe all know, or probably all know, this is, these commands are related to Python package distribution, which is what we're gonna talk about in this talk. So we first start off with some general notes on Python package distribution. Um, this is a beginner's talk, so the, the bar is a bit lower than maybe appropriate for the, the audience here, but still, I don't know who's watching online. Um, then we focus on pet, uh, Python package distribution with a focus on security. Uh, this is where TUF comes in, TUF short for the update framework. And then we'll talk about how the two fit together, integration journey, how TUF joins um, the Python package distribution, like number one Python package distribution platform. And this involves uh, PEP 458, we'll talk more about that later, and a piece of software called repository service for TUF, or RSTUF in short. Um, so let's get started. Python package distribution. Um, as we've all heard here in the past couple of days, Python runs everywhere, everybody, everybody loves Python, and I'm sure there are hundreds of reasons why Python is so popular. Um, I think one of them is that it has uh, a great collection of applications and libraries, and um, a reliable way of distributing those applications and libraries to develop new libraries. Number one distribution platform is PyPI, Python Pet Packaging Index, uh, where um, package maintainers register on the web UI and then upload, for example, with upload the packages, for example, with a command called twine or a newer way uh, they use trusted publishers and developers and users then can download these packages with um, a multitude of different um, package managers. One very popular is pip. Um, yeah, and warehouse is the software that runs PyPI, in case you haven't heard that before. Here are some stats that underline the popularity of PyPI. Um, there are I took the screenshot the other day, there are half a million projects on PyPI, almost six million releases, totaling to over 11 million files, artifacts as we call them um, in this domain. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, PyPI is popular and not only with its users, but also um, with attackers. So PyPI is an attractive target for it, or distribution platforms in general are an attractive target for attackers because that's where they can maximize their impact. Um, like one compromise can have millions of victims. And these compromises do happen. There was a nice talk about securing uh, your open source software supply chain yesterday around noon, uh, which enumerated over recent compromises in the supply chain and also in the 
a particular part of the supply chain, the distribution platform. Um, I'm also attaching a link to the slides at the end uh, with a nicely curated list of um, supply chain attacks over the last couple of years, um, uh, which is um, maintained by the tech security of the Cloud Native uh, Computing Foundation, CNCF. So um, when we talk about um, package distribution security, we usually talk about um, cryptographic signatures. Um, you can either sign the transport channel, um, think TLS or HTTPS, which is what currently mostly protects like how you get packages from PyPI, um, or you sign over the artifact, um, think TPG, which used to be available on, uh, with PyPI packages, but was removed uh, not too long ago. Uh, but yeah, signing over the artifact gives you integrity and authenticity guarantees of packages. However, signatures are only as good as the trust you can put in the key holder. Um, and you need a way to establish the trust and you need a way to revoke the trust. Um, in the scary scenario, the key gets compromised, stolen, but in the more realistic scenario, uh, someone just leaves an organization and you need to change those keys. Um, or the key holder proves to be incompetent and you maybe also want to revoke their um, and then there are other properties uh, besides integrity and authenticity, uh, which are freshness. You want to know that you always get like the most recent view of the content repository. And you also want to be sure that you get a consistent view. Like your signature of one package gives you guarantees about the package, but not about all the other packages. Um, Tough has good answers to these problems. Um, yeah, it protects freshness, consistency, and integrity. Uh, it allows you to manage trust at a scale. Um, it can reduce impact of compromise um, and supports embedded recovery. So, yeah, these are just the keywords. Um, it does this by having a specification, um, which, one second which defines different roles for different responsibilities. Um, and then it defines, like the specification defines metadata formats for those roles. And this metadata then contains mostly public keys and um, hashes of other metadata or artifacts. Um, and you have a very detailed client verification routine that um, tells you exactly how this metadata that's hosted in, along with the content repository and makes claims about the artifacts in that content repository, um, how that should be verified. Um, I'm not going into more details about TUF in this talk because it's a beginner talk, but I'm happy to talk to you later after the talk if you want. Um, the important thing here to note, or there are two important things I want you to remember of this. Um, first is the separation of responsibilities. Um, like you see these different roles, this usually means that you can have offline keys for some responsibilities, like the root of trust, which you use to change keys um, when yeah, something gets compromised or someone leaves the organization or so, uh, which is something that you do very rarely. Um, and so you can like have actual people plug in their YubiKey, tap something, sign something, and so on. And then you can have online keys for things that need to be like continuously available. Um, like there are different roles for freshness, for consistency, for integrity. Um, the freshness role is usually something, like it's, it's like a heartbeat. It's something that you always do with an online key. You always say, okay, um, I, I resign, like I sign over the index again and again and again, so that an attacker which hasn't compromised the key cannot like trick someone in, into presenting outdated, um, an outdated, outdated view of the repository. The role uh, that protects consistency and integrity is like, that's more vague, and that's the second thing about TUF, um, besides the separation of responsibilities, that's the um, flexible setups. So you can, for these about integrity, you can use either offline keys or online keys. 
In the scenario of a com community repository like uh, PyPI, uh, where everyone can always upload something, um, doing this with an offline key is kind of hard. So the solution I'm presenting today um, is using an online key for that. Um, yeah, and if this all sounds very vague to you and very complicated, then it's not you, that's tough. Um, and um, yeah, that's probably like the complexity is probably its worst enemy. And that's why we are trying to actually hide that complexity from the users and from the distribution platforms, like make all of this a black box. Um, talking about the journey, how Top joins Warehouse, um, the path which defines or describes how Top should go into PyPI was authored more than 10 years ago. Um, and Top still hasn't made it into production in Warehouse. Um, and yeah, there are several reasons. One I think is the not negligible complexity of the system and that you have to, like it's either a one or uh, all or nothing solution. Uh, then it's also like an engineering problem. There have been multiple integration attempts. Uh, they failed for different reasons. One was because the original tough Python library had scalability issues. Um, so we rewrote that. Um, now we have a really good Python tough library, um, which is used by many, many users. I'll talk about that later um, in production. Um, so we use that to build PEP458 into warehouse, like create a, a deep integration, but that resulted into multiple thousands of lines of code um, which were impossible to review by warehouse maintainers who are already spread thinly and usually aren't tough experts, understandably. Um, yeah, and another reason, PEP458 was always only considered as a stepping stone for a more secure but even more complicated tough solution. Like I was already saying, it uses an online key. It's basically a better TLS. Talk about that in a bit. Um, but it doesn't survive a compromise of the online key. Like if someone breaks into PyPI and manages to sign with that online key, then Tough doesn't help you there. But PEP458 does have a merit in itself. Um, and that is, it makes storage and transport security uh, non-critical. That's good news for mirrors or CDNs. So if someone breaks into your CDN or mirror of the index and the signed metadata, tough metadata is available from PyPI, then they can't compromise the packages or the index. And it adds these additional tough properties which are consistency and freshness. Um, and they invent key revocation. So if someone does manage to compromise the online key, then you can without much effort, like just gather the, the PyPI maintainers, they can do it in a distributed way, but they have to like they have to do something, but they can do it without um, involving any third parties to revoke that compromised key and roll out new ones. And the reason why PEP458 is actually making it into, into PyPI um, and the more complicated solution, maybe not, or <laughs> not now, is that it doesn't change any user workflows, neither for the package maintainers nor for the downloaders, like it's fully transparent for them. Um, and we think those properties are really good, and not only for PyPI, like it's a considerable, considerable amount of engineering to create this, to implement this, and we think it's worthwhile um, to plug it into a thought, that it's worthwhile to plug it into a service, so that it can be um, used by everyone, that's one benefit, and to, um, make tough, the whole tough complexity a black box. So that's why Cairo leads this endeavor. Um, that's why we created RS Tough, repository service for tough. It's, um, it has three comp components. Um, there is an API, like three components are this, this blue 
rectangles, there is an API at which you just throw changes to your index. Like you say, okay, someone uploaded a new package and you can do this like, rapidly. And uh, then you have a, yeah, that's the API. And then you have a worker architecture that scales where you can like just pick up tasks that come in via the API and do the metadata updates um, and signing the tough metadata and so on uh, as they come in and you can scale it up um, using like uh, service um, tooling for that. And the third component is a CLI which helps to um, make it easier to manage the trust where like actual people are needed with their Yubi keys and so on. Um, it has um, like a wizard like CLI dialog that just asks you for online keys and you configure can also you configure which keys, well it asks you for public keys, you can, can configure the online key that is used in the workers to sign metadata and you also configure the offline keys that uh, should be used as root of trust and um, also sign it then. Um, Cairo and his colleague Martin already presented our stuff last year at EuroPython um, and since then there have been a bunch of developments um, it's now an open SSF incubating project, which is nice. It gives us visibility, uh, can attract new collaborators. Um, it has a massively improved CLI, um, which allows it to easily add arbitrary uh, sig signing technologies. Uh, like it's, it's ready to support AWS, GCP, Azure, HashiCorp, and so on. You can all configure all of those via the CLI and then just um, it magically works in the service. Um, and yeah, we, we put a lot of effort to work towards a stable release. Our stuff is still in pre-release phase, but yeah, we're, we're getting there. And the most important uh, news is that it's now in warehouse. So you can browse the official warehouse documentation and you'll you'll see, sorry, you'll see how to set up warehouse for admittedly for development only, but with the RS stuff um, uh, service attached to it. And the integration journey has been so much smoother compared to the deep integration. Um, like we submitted a range of bite-sized pull requests um, which were I think like really had a minimal diff. Uh, the, most of the lines of code were actually tests. Uh, first one was to just like add Docker configuration to spin up the services, the worker and the API and related resources. Second one added a static um, root, of, root signing ceremony, like um, the root of trust, which will in production then be replaced by root keys from the PyPI maintainers or PSF members as it's um, like thought of in the, in the PEP. And the third one is what actually enables um, tough signing uh, that is um, adding hooks to all the, all the parts in the code where the index actually changes when someone uploads to PyPI, when someone removes packages, when packages get yanked, and so on. Um, this is still pending, um, but it's like it's fully tested, has full coverage, I think it's really good code. Um, yeah, we're only waiting from the PyPI maintainers to merge it. Next steps are um, creating a go live plan, and um, yeah, where we, where we, this is mostly documentation for the PyPI maintainers, how they can enable this in production, how they do the ceremony with the CLI, um, and how they, how they trigger something that we call back signing, where they sign all the existing indices. Um, and of course, like making our stuff stable. And the latter is also interesting for our friends over at RubyGems. Um, and this is quite a fun story, I think. Um, last year when Cairo and Martin presented our stuff here at EuroPython in Prague, uh, they caught the attention of a RubyGems maintainer 
and they met and I think had a couple of beverages and like uh, now a year later, our stuff is also used by RubyGems. Also only in, like it's only a development integration but at a uh, similar state or in a similar state as the warehouse integration. And it's been a good collaboration with that uh, RubyGems maintainer. I think this is really cool. And um, another fun fact with tie which ties back into the previous talk about trusted publishers. This is a bit of a tangent and not really related to PEP 4558, more, more or less um, complementary. So Tuff actually gets into a warehouse from a different angle. Um, as I said, Tuff is highly flexible. It can be used as it's used by PEP 458. That's one way of using it. But um, it's also used for six store root signing. So that's where we get a lot of users for the Python Tuff implementation. Um, for those who are not familiar with six store, six store, six store is a way of um, removing private key management from uh, cryptographic signatures, so you can sign without having a key, basically. You do that using uh, OpenID Connect, the same technology that you use for trusted publishing. And there is, um, Facunda didn't talk about that yet, but um, there is development to extend the trusted publisher uh, efforts to also upload um, publish attestation using um, using Trusted Publisher, like using OpenID Connect. And this means you create a signature using SIGSTORE, and when you verify it, that upload at the station, then you will need TUF in order to verify, to like go back to the root of trust for SIGSTORE and verify that th those keys are, um, like have all the security guarantees that TUF, TUF gives them. Um, and that's basically it. Um, I'd like to conclude my talk with an invitation. Um, come join our stuff. We are very, um, like we, we highly appreciate contributions. It's an open source project. Uh, it's a small group of friendly people from different organizations, from TestifySec, NYU, uh, Google, Broadcom, Datadog, um, and all sorts of skills are welcome. Uh, or if you are a, a warehouse contributor or even maintainer, uh, make some noise on the pending pull requests. Uh, we'd love a review there. Um, and uh, yeah, and if you are a maintainer of a um, content repository, uh, then you should, and like the security benefits that our stuff brings, you should uh, definitely give it a, a look. Uh, as I said earlier, our stuff is not only uh, for PyPI, it's also used for RubyGems, it's, uh, but uh, like it's completely artifact and language agnostic. You don't even have to use it for programming packages, but can also use it for documents and whatnot. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thank you for coming and listening. Here are the links that I promised. Um, I'll upload the slides in a minute. and. If there are any questions, I'm happy to try answering them. Yes, thank you, Lucas. I believe we have at least six minutes cool. for the discussion. I would like a microphone. Thank you for the talk. Uh, quick question about Tuff. Uh, like you showed the six store and like that whole protocol about how like signature verifications and all that work. But for the other trust route. Do Tuff uses any of the existing PKI knowledge which we already have, or is it completely new? I tried to read that Tuff specifications mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, I think, and but yeah, a like few things went above my head, so I just did not finish reading it, so asking you here. Sure, thanks for your question. Uh, do I understand correctly, so uh, whether Tuff relies on something like Web PKI or Web of Trust or something, or an existing PKI? Existing PKI solutions, is it yeah. just following up? Um, no, it's its own PKI solution. So, does that answer the question? Yes. It's so completely self-contained. So. Yeah, that answers the question. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. If not, that we have a small thank you card. <laughs> 
This is for your colleague. Thank you. And this is for you. Thanks. And also you said you don't have any allergies, so a cookie. I can use that. Cheers. Yes, thank you, Lucas. And let's thank give you. a round of applause. Thank you.